Hi, this is Ira Gorlick, and welcome to this series of lectures on the economics of net neutrality. I want to start with sort of a foundational thinking here in the sense that whenever we look at, at our communities, um, whatever our thinking is about how the communities do work always carries with it an inherent notion of how the communities should work. And so these lectures that I'm putting forth on economics are intended to focus on how our communities do and should work, and I'm going to focus on it from an economic standpoint. As I always do, I have a learning objective. Um, intent is very important in communication. So what's my intent on these series of lectures? It's to be able to describe the optimum role of the community in managing commerce in general and internet in specific. So I'm interested in the role of the government and role of the community in commerce in general, but I think net neutrality in the internet is, and, and telecommunications is a great opportunity to study that in specific and then see if the rules apply. So what I want to do by the end of this series of lectures is be able to understand the economic basis that could help us figure out the optimum role of the community in commerce. And also, I want to understand some of the differences between the economic thinking of the early part of the 20th century, since that's when, when the first telecommunications laws were passed, and the economic thinking today. So let me tell you what I believe. Let me start it off here because I want you to know my bias. Remember in the, in the overview lectures, I talk about confirmation bias and all the biases. So I want you to know what my bias is as we go through this. And, and my initial bias is I do not want the government to mandate and enforce net neutrality. So in, the, in, in, in the, 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 those that want net neutrality and those that don't, I tend to look more on the, net, on the no net neutrality side. However, and, and this is an important however, I do want a few carefully crafted rules to be enacted to ensure optimum internet effectiveness. So while I don't want the government to mandate this thing called net neutrality, I do have some specific things I do want the government to do in order to assume, assume optimum internet effectiveness. And one specific rule that I want to see is transparency. And in terms of economics, this is going to be important in terms we talk about asymmetrical information versus symmetrical information, perfect uh, competition, and so on. So how did I get to where, what I believe? I believe essentially free markets are good, but I also believe there are bad actors that can hinder the optimum functioning market. So I also believe that minimally carefully crafted rules are necessary for an optimum functioning market. And by the way, I'm in, this whole class is going to be trying to support these views uh, of mine. Now, when we say minimally crafted rules, what I'm talking about is rules set standards of good behavior so that good actors know what good behavior is and the courts can determine then what bad behavior is. And I think rules should meet three tests. They should be narrowly crafted, only address compelling community interests, and achieve the goal. Now, in the next series of lectures on, on, on telecommunications regulations and on political um, action, I'll go more into details on how the rules are set, but just uh, have this as your background to as I move forward. I also believe that there must be penalties for violating the standards of good behavior. The specific penalty must be commensurate with the harm violating the standard does to the community. So jaywalking has a different perspective, a different penalty than murder might have, does have. So the intent of this class is to articulate why I believe all this. And I want to ask you to tell me if my conclusions are correct or not. So I'm going to ask for your help in this. And if you think they are not correct, to tell me why so I can change to the correct conclusions. This class, like all my classes, are not, don't exist as, as a thing. They exist as a continuum. And I'm hoping that the dialogue between me and you, we will help to improve the class every time it's taught. As I've talked about earlier, there are multiple states. I have five steps to the learning process. Um, the three that are important here are one is to set a learning objective. We have that learning objective and that is to figure out the optimum role of the community in commerce. 
Uh, in order to do that, you need to understand as much about the thing you want to learn as possible. So we're going to learn about what economics is and what is commerce and, and how the community can have a role in that. And also, in the process, I want to learn as much about myself as possible. Um, you know, what are my biases? What do I believe? And is what I believe correct? I only have two rules in this class. One is no personal or ad hominem attacks. So let me give you an example of what I would think to be an ad hominem attack, a personal attack. Here's something out of Mises.org that I found a quote says, essentially says laws is a stern and proper response to the various economic ignoramuses. Well, I see that as a personal attack. There's no reason to use the word ignoramuses. The chances are that people who are attacking whatever Say's Laws is, I have no idea what Say's Law is, but whoever is attacking it, um, I don't think could be called an ignoramus. I think we need to make sure that, that we be careful that we don't have any personal attacks. Now, if, if there's something's wrong with Say's Laws, then, then we can have arguments in favor or, or opposed, but there's no reason to use names and call people names. My, my key here, my rule is just give others respect. I, I, that, that's so important to me. And, you know, if you disagree with their conclusions, either explain why their conclusions are wrong or provide alternative conclusions. You know, I think that a reason a lot of people respond, resort to personal attacks is that they can't argue the conclusions, that they just have a belief and they don't know why they believe it. And so rather than try to, to disagree on a rational basis, they go to personal attacks. So I'm really asking in our discussions that we don't do that. The way I've divided this class up is into three broad categories. I'm going to talk about definitions first, um, like com what is commerce, what is the community, what is government, what are rational actors. And then I'm going to go into specific terms in detail in terms of how they're applied, like supply and demand. I'm going to spend a lot of time on information and transparency, spend a lot of time on invisible hand, uh, on natural monopoly, since that's key in telecommunications. And then finally, I'm going to end with a, a discussion of the schools of thought. I've listed three here, uh, but I might have, have some more by the time we get to the end. So. So the next series of lectures, I'm going to go over the economic terms that need definitions. Uh, so thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy this class.